When, to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of four bemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. I suppose you want to know what that was? Yeah, that's Shakespeare. William Shakespeare's 30th Sonnet. He has a way of writing in very obscure, but very emotional ways. Like that one. I think it's one of his best. Here, let me try to explain. Right off the bat, he makes it pretty clear. The speaker, not Shakespeare necessarily in this case, is alone. Completely isolated. And he's looking back on his life and thinking, what did I do right? Not what did I do wrong, but what did I do right? He sees himself as alone in the world, and as he looks back, he's slipping back into memories of things long gone. Illustrated well by Shakespeare in his alliteration, Sessions of Sweet Silent Thought. Slipping back into that serene memory of things long past. Although, to the man, they feel as if they just occurred. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. He's looking back on himself, thinking of what his life has been so far. He finishes off the first quatrain by mourning the things he never achieved. In one line, he breaks the pattern of iambic pentameter using the word many to break the mold and to emphasize the sheer number of things he did wrong. And in the last line, he breaks the rhyme scheme, emphasizing how much he wasted his time. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes do wail my dear time's waste. He then continues by saying, then can I drown an eye, unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night. He cries. He cries for the many friends he has lost, the many friends who died. And he cries for the first time in a long time, as he describes by saying that his eye is unused to flow, in addition to these friends that he has lost. He has also lost a love from long ago. In line 7 he illustrates the fact that he missed an opportunity. He was in love, but he let that slip through his fingers. And weep afresh loves long since cancelled woe. Wrapping up this second quatrain, this lonely creature summarizes his misery. And moan the expense of many a vanished sight. And you'll see again, he breaks the iambic pentameter. Once again, he is emphasizing the sheer quantity of his regrets. He repeats the word he uses to open the second quatrain as he begins the third, and he continues mourning his past as well. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone? And as he continues through this section, he continues to repeat words that he has said in the lines. And heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of four bemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. With this, with this he is emphasizing that he is feeling what he has felt before, now, 
just as potently as he did the first time. But here he stops short. He looks to his young friend, and all the missed opportunities he sees in this friend, in youth. He sees new hope, hope for a future of success, hope for a person who may truly succeed. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. Here the speaker has turned to his friend to remind him of the seemingly infinite potential youth holds. The lonely man has wasted his time and warns his friend against making these same mistakes.